bet this fella looks as it goes past. Yep. Yep, he's still having a good look. So if you want to attract old country gentlemen, get one of these. Nineteen seventy six CX twenty two hundred Palace. This is a rare CX. I mean, all CXs are quite rare, but this one, CX people will be looking at this saying, what the hell? How are the wheels turned on that CX? There's no one in the car, it's off. It doesn't have power steering. Yeah, this is, um, this is a rare machine. Had this car in for some work. Just finished doing some hydraulics on it. Um, and some other bits and bobs. Just out on a test drive, make sure the exhaust isn't rubbing because I've moved it down there. Well, I haven't moved it down there. It was already down there, but I've removed it slightly. But what we're going to do now is go for a drive. I'll hop in, and you're lucky people. And I'm a lucky person. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, so now I've got in the right side. You've just got to look at this crazy interior. All the browns. So this car isn't mine, it's owned by a customer. Kindly let me take it out, and I'd take it on a test drive anyway. He's kindly let me film it and then nip out, and I thought, well, I'll bring the camera along. I've had this car in before, uh, fitted LEDs, or well, modified the funny bulbs that Citroen have down here in the heater controls, because of course they're down there. Fitted LEDs to that. I've fitted an LED to this which is a lamp put the lights on using prn you have a torch and you can put it back in the holder so if you push it like that there's a micro switch on the back of it if you tip it forward you've got a footwell light and if you pull it off you've got a torch for reading maps or something um so you've got prn obviously indicators up here Wiper down here. It's gone very bright all of a sudden. The horn. Uh, light switch and everything over here. It has very soft seats, but the most important thing it has is the hydro pneumatic suspension, which we'll sample in a minute. But look at these dials. Look at that rev counter. It's like the Mark 1 BX has that as the speedo. But look at that. That's the first thing I can't help but notice with this car is how many people look at it. Um, this is a very pretty car. Of that, there is no doubt. Uh, whether you like Citroëns or not, this, I mean, in the motor trade, certainly in the repair section, Citroëns are very Marmite. And the reality is, most garages you go in, most normal garages, most normal businesses, you know, bring up Citroëns and you'll be met with rubbish because, you know, they like Vauxhalls and Fords and Volkswagens and things like that. Anything slightly out of the uh, ordinary is met with disdain. But this car, when it first came in, even some of the guys in the, in the business next door saw it and said, wow, look at that. That is a good looking car. It really is a good looking car. So this is a really early CX. I think CX, I don't know a lot about CXs. That's that is silly, I admit. I should, but I don't. Um, so this is a 76 car. Oh God, God it leans. The steering, as I say, it doesn't have power steering. I'll get onto that in a minute. 76 car, very early for a UK car. Well, it's not a UK car. If it was, I'd be sat over there. The CX, I think came out in 74. Last true Citroen. It's the last Citroen that's not diluted with PSA stuff, isn't it? There's switch gear in here that is the same as on the uh, SM. Like the button that um, down here, that turns the courtesy light on, but it makes it look like it blows the car up. The uh, windscreen wash jets, which I will try out because the windscreen is dirty, but I don't know how the hell you... Nope. Ah, you pull it towards you. And they're not really doing much. Oh, look, a Lotus Elan. There we go. So there's our single wiper. Yeah, don't. I'm not driven many CXs. I think I've only. This might be the second one I've ever driven. 
I've driven this car before, but I've driven a turbo diesel and it was such an early turbo diesel in the UK that it was badged a TRD turbo. You have to watch my VX Myths video to see why that's interesting. And I remember driving it and thinking it, how it felt like it shrank itself around you. And I don't know if that is the case. This doesn't feel like it does so much, but it's left-hand drive and everything, driving left-hand drive in the UK, especially a manual, I get very cack-handed uh, with my right hand and I will miss many gears. But thanks to the power of editing, you won't see any of it. But yeah, it, it's a lovely machine. The seats are very soft, as you can probably imagine. Um, this one's sat quite bolt upright at the moment, which is a bit uncomfortable. I think that's just how the guy has it, the owner. Um, and I don't want to muck around with his seat too much. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I'll go over that in a BX at that speed, and you're just not ruffled at all. He just goes over it. With that, it got the sort of wee that, you know, when Citroen's compressed sometimes a little bit too much. Um, the steering isn't power steering and I'm not going to say power assisted because obviously CX's had Duravi steering, fully powered steering, like the SM. I'm not entirely, I can't remember if I've mentioned it or not, but I, I actually have one of those. But uh, yeah, normally a CX would have Duravi steering and that poses some issues when it doesn't. And I don't know 100% sure and I'm happy to be corrected by CX people. But to me, it feels like a car that is designed to have power steering, and therefore, if it doesn't, it, it doesn't really work. Cars that can have it with or without, example, a Saxo, or a Ford Fiesta, or, you know, whatever, there's loads of cars out there, a TBR Chimera, they're cars that you could have them with or without power steering. Power steering was an option, power assisted steering was an option. And so they work both ways. They work differently, but they work both ways. Well, this car, you kind of get the feeling that it really did not need it because, well, there's two reasons, um, neither of which are particularly easy to spot when you're out and about driving on a, a sort of straight or slightly winding road like this, but there are a lot of turns, lock to lock. You really have to wind the lock on, it's like driving a bus. And in, in a car with Duravi, that wouldn't be the case. It would be a much quicker ratio, like the SM. Um, in the SM, I, it's, it's not even one full turn to get to full lock one way. So it's less than two turns lock to lock. I think it's like, if you watch one on full lock, I think it very nearly goes 360 degrees. I don't know what the CX is. I think it's one and a half turns each way, um, if it's got Duravi. But this, I haven't measured it. Because to be honest, I haven't got the arm power. So yeah, this is not a car to go hoofing down country lanes at speed, which is a, a, bit, a bit of a shame because if you drive something like a BX, you really can. You know, there's just a way that BXs, Zantias, XMs, the C6 does it, you know, they just kind of hook up um, and, uh, and glide down roads that wind from side to side. And I'm sure other CXs might do that, but this one doesn't feel like that. This one feels like, no, you you sit back and you wait, you chill out. And it's not because it'll just do it all for you, it's because it's, it's, it is quite involved to drive, but it's just, it doesn't want to be hurried. Um, this one only has four gears as well. The, there are only four speeds, so it's a 2.2 litre four cylinder carburetor engine. I think it's based on the, um, the engine in the DS, if I remember rightly. It's an evolution of that. Um, I don't know how much power it's got. I've just hit. An, I've got an Eiffel Tower here. I've just hit it just to remind us we're in a French car. Is if you needed reminding. I don't know how powerful it is. I'm going to have a guess. It's about 100 horsepower. And then I think there was a two liter that came out to start with, and I'm guessing they were about 90. Maybe this is a bit more than 100. Maybe 105, 110. It's not a speed machine. It's not a smooth engine. It's not a refined engine. It's not a sweet engine. It is just an engine. But a lot of that isn't down to Citroen. They wanted to put cooler things in this. They had a triple rotor, um, wankel rotary engine that was gonna go in this before they discovered that they plowed all their money into a rotary engine project that was doomed. Um, and they did wanna put V6s in it. I think it was, I think they were working on a version of the SM's V6 um, that could be put in. 
because it's 90 degrees, so it sits quite would sit quite low under the bonnet line. And then of course Peugeot took Citroen over and, and they said, well, that's great, we can just use your PRV. I mean, it's not as good as ours, but it would fit. And Peugeot were like, uh, not. That's why they brought the 604 out. They wanted to do all the presidential cars and yeah, they didn't like Citroen basically. I don't even think they wanted to buy them, to be honest. I think they were forced to. But um, yeah, so the CX only ever got these kind of old school four pots, which is a, a real shame. But it's torquey enough. I mean, that's third gear and it's quite tall gearing. I'm going up a hill there, pulling away smoothly. So of course you've got your PRN controls up here, like the Mark 1 BX did. Um, it's not as, oh God, see how many turns. Yeah, it's it's not as um, sweet to drive as a BX in terms of just flowing from bend to bend. And let's be honest, some of that probably is down to the fact that it's got Peugeot DNA under it because Peugeot really did get their game together in the 80s, uh, in the late 70s, I suppose. But yeah, certainly the early 80s and 90s, Peugeot were the kings of making something ride and handle at the same time. Whereas this, this is lovely. This is probably one of my favourite cars we've ever had in, but I wouldn't say it handles amazingly well. It just, it, it isn't a, it's like the C6. The handling, what does the CX handle like? It, it just, I don't know. It isn't a consideration. But the gearbox is, uh, it's quite a precise shift. It's, it's quite notchy. So it's not a smooth change. You have to sort of feel your way through it, but it's not really an issue again because it's not like you're going to be racing gear changes in it. It, it. it works with the car. An automatic would work better. And I'm actually not minding the fact I've got an automatic SM at the moment so much having driven this because I think an automatic would suit this more than a four-speed manual. But it is the suspension that makes it. I mean, it's revving a bit high at the moment, actually. It's not a bit of wind noise. Oh, it just glides. It really does. It's such a good ride. It, this car, it's a good ride. It does come at the expense, I would say, of road holding. That's my opinion. I think you can't hurry this down a road. You have to back off a bit. Like here, there's a little, yeah. It's a little crest and it kind of, it dropped into it quite violently. Whereas a BX wouldn't do that. So maybe, there we go, there's another one. Yeah, oh wow. Yeah, it doesn't like that. It doesn't like those crests. But this has got much more, um, not complicated, but it is more, more comprehensive suspension than a BX. A BX has very simple McPherson strut arrangement at the front and uh, a rear axle. It's basically a Peugeot system, but with hydro pneumatic spheres and cylinders. This car's got per, uh, Citroen's, not wishbones as such, but it's got twin arms on the front. It does have trailing arms like a, an SM or a DS. But for the ride, it's better. For the ride, this is brilliant. I mean, they're all brilliant, but this is, this really can hit some big lumps and bumps and just hits them and just deals with them absurdly well but it does come with, I personally think it does come at the expense of the handling. It's not a sharp handle. I think maybe one with the power steering, you know, they did the GTI versions. Maybe they would be different, but it's a big steering wheel, a lot of turns lock to lock. But if one of the other issues, I think perhaps with the steering, and I, I haven't thought about it too much, so it could be wrong, but the SM, as an example, has center point steering geometry. And that, I'm not going to go into the complexities of that, but what it basically means is manufacturers engineer a certain degree of scrub radius. They want a certain degree of misalignment, if you like, when you turn the wheel, because that helps pull the wheel central again. It stops the car wanting to turn naturally because it's trying not to. And that's what gives you a bit of self-centering effect. Um, obviously, in a car like an SM, it doesn't need it because it has steering that centers itself and speed sensitive. Uh, it's, it centers itself based on its speed. Fiendishly clever. A CX with Duravi would do that, but this one doesn't have it. And I wonder if the hardware, where it feels like it is set up, I could be wrong, but it feels like it's set up for the power steering. 
and like there'll be some tight roundabouts you'll go into and I haven't I'm not gonna find any on this road but it's almost like you have to wind the steer it in and then wind it back out again but brakes being uh, a hydro pneumatic Citroen the, the power brakes power operated brakes um, they are yeah spot on actually anything this pedal isn't quite as razor sharp or trigger happy as my mark 1 BX um, that one you really if you touch the pedal and that too hard yeah you'll know about it but, but yeah it to be honest it's one of those cars it's not so I mean, it's fun to drive because of what kind of car it is and it's just so different and it's so pretty as well I bet this fella looks as it goes past yep Yep, he's still having a good look. So if you want to attract old country gentlemen, get one of these. Oh, million turns. There we go. Gear knob is actually the same as the one in a BX. Oh, I hate being in a left-hand drive car when I'm... You've just got no mirror over there either. There's no... It's only got one mirror. So I just have no idea how close I am to that white line. Generally just guess it by getting as close as I feel like I can on this side. I've got to get used to it. Yeah, if you're ever driving down the road and you're sort of stuck behind the CX2200 Palace, have mercy because it just doesn't encourage you to drive faster. So even the throttle response, you push your foot on the pedal, nothing happens. But it has got a twin choke carb, so if you get through that second the pressure point and open the second choke up, it will give you acceleration. I think it's one of those cars where it hides its speed. It doesn't really... And I suppose back in the day, if you go back to the 70s when this was out, this definitely, I don't think, would have been a slow car. I, I, I think this would have been pretty acceptable. It's just nice just to bimble around in and look at. Oh, yeah, it's got... There you go. I don't actually think we went much faster there, but it felt like it was trying. I don't know how accurate that speedo is. I'm, I mean, that's in kilometers an hour, by the way. Don't think I'm being a reprobate. Into the corner, downshift, heel and toe. Maybe not, oh God. Oh, I do love these cars. They're just nice. Oh God, <laughs> he says, whoa. Ah, these are horrible crests here. It is not going to like this. Oh, God, no, it really doesn't. It really gets caught out. Oh, jeez. Wow. Bottomed and topped out. That's quite extreme. I wonder if it's got the wrong spheres in it or something. Maybe, it, I mean, it is very soft, but it's not, it doesn't feel like, oh, God, like Meg did when it had those spheres in the front that weren't actually suspension spheres it does feel like it's got damping it feels on roads like this it feels great very composed but uh yeah wow when the, when the going gets tough you've got to back off in this in this particular car you've, you've got to the bx i could have gone over that at 50 60. it might have had a bit of a shudder but it would have dealt with it how many turns many many turns yeah, and it's heavy. It's heavy steering. This has no parking, but I'm not parking. I'm, I'm just waiting for a mate. All right. There you go, you put the handbrake light on and it, and it starts flashing, that's normal. So. Let's check out the outside. <laughs> Oh. Oh, One of the things that's interesting it doesn't feel like a tinny car. Everyone always looks at these sections, oh it's a, it's flimsy, it's spitting Kleenex and all those other gags, but it doesn't feel like that. I mean how pretty is this car? Look at the big hatchback that isn't saloon boot 
quite big, goes in quite a long way. Yeah, concave rear screen. Fair bit of room in the back, but not huge amounts. Don't forget, they did they did do a version which had more legroom, that was the Prestige, which uh, Peugeot didn't want them to build. Let's take a quick, uh, quick look at that powerhouse up front. There we go. A very odd engine because it's canted so far forward, it's kind of leaning this way. The crankshaft will be down here somewhere. It means the, the nose can be low and the drag coefficient can be low. Uh, CX was actually a play on the drag coefficient symbol, I think. I can't remember what it is, I think it's 0.30 or 0.32 or maybe even 0.29, but yeah, numbered. Cylinder one is on there, on the right, of course. I think that's because in a DS, the back of the engine, because the gearbox is here on this car, the back of the engine would actually be facing you because the gearbox is in front of it, like in the SM. Spare wheel under the bonnet, obviously, because why not? Got his supply of uh, emergency fluid, green blood. Just what a pretty car that is. Now this car has actually got air conditioning, but it's been decommissioned, uh, unfortunately. Electric windows. And then down there you've got your heater controls. You have it on your feet if you're wearing those shoes. There's the button that makes the car explode. What it actually does is turn that light on, which is the same as an SM. I need one of them. I wonder if he'll, be, he'll notice if it disappears. Uh, reverse gear up and over to the right, which is just bizarre. You don't get any way you do that. And then you've got the height control lever here. So obviously we can raise the car up uh, for maintenance, put it in intermediate here for if we went up there or um, putting it low there to look like a rude boy. Back we go, look at that finish. All right, now I've got to try and reverse out of this silly little lay-by that I've got myself into. All right, and this is where we're into this thing with a steer in it. It's heavy. There we go. Yeah, it's, uh, oh God, there's mud. I don't want to go on the mud. I know this car, um, obviously it's left-hand drive and you might imagine that it's come from France or something like that. There you go. There you go. Um, it hasn't. It's come, I believe, uh, it's from Greece or Cyprus, I, I think. Um, and I think I remember him saying that the previous owners had this thing for 40 odd years. Which, there you go, he's moved over for me, look, because I'm in such a pretty car. Incidentally, I used to own a, um, a Citroen Xantia Activa, which I swapped with someone many, many years ago. And then a couple of years later, or maybe even a few years later, I saw it in one of these driveways and I was amazed. I was like, oh my God, there's my Activa, a silver one. Yeah, I don't even, can't remember what house it was. But yeah, this car, I think, came from a family. I think it was a family car in Cyprus. And that's why it's very original underneath. It's, uh, it really is underneath, it's in good nick. It, it needs a bit of undersill now. Um, it's on the turn, it's, it's, it's very original. And it could really do with some protection. I think that's gonna be one of the jobs I uh, recommend to him. <laughs> yeah, what would Citroen having effectively, wish I had Duravi, um, yeah, effectively having brought the monocoque shell um, into uh, mass production, you know, brought it to the masses with the traction of on. It seems odd that this wouldn't be a full on true monocoque car, but, or unitary construction, I should say, but, but it isn't. It's, um, bloody hell. Sorry, I've blinded all of a sudden. Yeah, it's not. It's, um, 
it's odd. It's kind of like semi monocoque. Let's do a performance test. Yes. Yeah, you're not going to win any races in it, um, but you just cruise. Uh, yeah, it's got these things called long runs, and basically it's like a big under, like a subframe, like a giant subframe for the car to sit on. So you could turn around and say, well, the suspension, the brakes, the engine, all bolted to it, which is, the, you know, that same as with any chassis, a TVR, you know. Uh, Land Rover, you have your suspension, engine, everything all bolted into this chassis. So the CX therefore has a chassis. But this, it's like it's got one big subframe underneath it, as opposed to just having individual subframes. So, I don't know, it probably would still be classed as a monocoque, I suppose. I'm not 100% sure, if I'm honest. I mean, I don't think it matters, really, but... So we're doing 100 kph there, or kmh. Uh, so that's 60 mile an hour, near enough. In fact, that's probably a bit more than 60, isn't it? Well, if that was even accurate. Um, it's not a quiet car. There's quite a lot of engine noise. But then it has only got four gears. We're turning over 3,000 revs here. It, yeah, the suspension's good. But I didn't think I'd get into this and drive it down these kind of roads and think that the BX was a, it could hold a candle to it. But it really, the BX can. It's actually, the BX is much more stable. This is quite wobbly. I mean, Whoa, look at that! Bloody hell. The BX just doesn't do that. It is soft, the BX, don't get me wrong, it does roll. It's quite spongy, but... It's just much sharper in the corners. This isn't sharp at all. It really is just... I think this is just made for straight lines without crests it gets to the speed fine this is this hill here with a in a low power car this hill can suck the speed right out of a car um i test drive quite a few old cars up here and this is having no problem at all absolutely no problem at all at sitting at, at the limit if anything i'm backing off so i think you've got to think of these things in context can you compare this 1976 what else would you have bought you know, a Granada. How would a Granada compare to this? I don't know, but I imagine the Granada is nowhere near as smooth as this. Nowhere near as good at cruising as this. Probably not as comfy as this. Definitely not as pretty as this. But it was probably a bit cheaper. And if you wanted someone to fix it, you could just take it to your local thread in a shed and they'd fix it for you. Whereas this, they'd probably make a hash of it. And then you'd have to take it somewhere else to get the first fix fixed again. And it'd just end up costing you a fortune. And then you'd have bad memories of your Citroen ownership in the 70s. It was an Alfa Romeo GT. Oh dear, right, oh God. Honestly, it feels like I'm gonna fall out of it. Yeah, it's just a nice little day out for cruising around whoa the steering you can tell it's come from a hot climate it's really like burnt up and bobbly it's all melted the interior is held up pretty well considering it's got a few cracks in the door cards you can see like some there the dashboard's really good nick and i mean apart from some of the rattles and things which to be honest i'm not convinced you wouldn't get them in any car this age it doesn't feel light and flimsy. It feels like a bit of a tank, to be honest. <laughs> the guy in front is bang bang over the roundabout. This just went duh, duh. But yeah, it's not an. It's not agile. It's not a. It's not a weapon. But it's not meant to be, is it? The CX is not meant to be. It's just a nice classless car to drive, and I, I don't mean classless in like tasteless. I mean. Like, you could go anywhere in this. You could, you know, if you were bothered about image or whatever, you could pull up at any hotel or any hotel or pub or country park or prom or whatever, car show. 
gets caught out over crests and things. And I read in magazines about hydronomatic citrons having that and suffering that fate. And I've never really found it. But then of course, I've only ever really, you know, BX is about as old as I've owned. Well, apart from the SM, but I've never driven that. I've just sat in it, made noises going. Nye! I don't know how that actually rides, but this, this is softer than a BX, without a doubt. It's the softest hydro-pneumatic citron I've driven. That is coming at a bit of a cost. Because it, yeah, you can't hurry at A to B. In any other Citroen I've driven, things like BX's, Xantia, C6, etc. It does feel like you can go as fast as you can go. The car won't, there'll be no problem. But in this, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like, you know, the car's got a limit. Don't go past it. But it's lovely. My concluding thought, I think, is that it's a very, very pretty, lovely colour. Soft, comfy, interesting, charming. But you don't buy it if you want to have fun driving. That's my opinion. It's, it's, it's fun to drive because we're all used to driving this and cash... Okay. Kashkai? What is it? Whatever that is. A cash... Yeah, that thing. Or an Astra, like the one behind us. That, that, this is fun because we're used to driving guff like that, but any old car is fun if you compare it to modern cars because they're all different, whereas modern cars all feel pretty much the same. Um, so it depends what kind of driving event you want. If you just want to drive somewhere and travel somewhere in your classic car and do it comfortably in style, and with a degree of practicality because there's a fair bit of room in there yeah that this is probably a good one to have if you want to turn heads this is definitely a good car to have because i'm sensing a lot of heads turning it's a lovely color this as well it's such a color scheme the sm was available in delta blue hmm i don't think it was on my year actually but uh yeah if you want to like be involved in the drive then no look elsewhere you want if it's a hydrodynamic citron you're looking at i'd probably be thinking about a bx gti or something like that 16 valve oh i've just done that thing they do on top gear where they make the indicators go all over the place because i'm getting myself discombobulated because i'm doing my indicators with my left hand which I'd normally do but then I'm changing gear with my right hand and I'm like turning to the I'm on the wrong side of the road but I'm turning oh yeah so yeah that that would be my concluding thought on it really it's a car to, to drive but equally a car to be driven in and it's a car that you know you can enjoy just going for you can enjoy motoring just general motoring he says pulling away really unsmoothly um as opposed to like the thrill of driving if you just want to cruise about in your classic car comfortably i think this car might even make me look stylish uh, no maybe no nah, it's not that good right i'm heading into traffic now that's enough thoughts and waffling thank you for watching and i shall see you in another person's car maybe or maybe mine.